Welcome to the Summer 2023 Tangible Truth Podcast Best of Series. Join us as we revisit your top seven favorite shows so far of 2023. Whether you are re-listening or hearing them for the first time, we pray they will strengthen your walk with Jesus while improving your mental health. Enjoy these episodes and we'll see you back for all new episodes starting August 15th. When, when I'm really in pain and I feel like I've turned to Jesus and I can't find him there, how do I work past that block that brings me closer to him and doesn't just leave me in a place where I then pull away and do my protective move and then never get back to him? I'm Susan Goss, and as a seasoned therapist of more than 15 years, I'm honored to have had the opportunity to gain so much wisdom from so many people and love passing that knowledge on to others. So join me and some of my favorite friends as we share some tangible truths with you. Welcome back to the Tangible Truth Podcast. I'm Susan, and we have Megan back with us, and I'm so excited. And today, I want to really formally introduce Megan because I've not done it yet. So, Megan, I want to say to the listeners where you work, how we first met, because I'm thrilled to be able to tell them that, because they know that this is Tangible Truth Podcast, and you were part of Tangible Truth for a while. You want to tell them about that? Yeah, I would love to. Hi, listeners. I'm glad to be back. So I actually, right now, I work at the Joshua Center in Rogers, Mm -hmm. um, and but even previous that, I came to meet meet Susan with um, Tangible Truth Hermitage, which was down in Greenbrier, and I got to do intensives with women down there in a sweet little cabin. So I miss that a whole, whole lot because now I'm back in Northwest Arkansas. But again, love working at TJC too. Of course, miss the Hermitage. And but I'm so glad that I get to be a part of Tangible Truth again, just sitting here with you, Susan. So. Yes, I love that. Yeah, when Megan lived in Greenbrier, it was just the perfect fit because a friend of mine gave Tangible Truth the Hermitage. It's a cabin and only females could go there. And so Megan was our counselor and they would go down for the weekend or during the week for an extended stay. It was wonderful. And we just loved having you part of the Tangible Truth, Megan. And I also love it that you're at the Joshua Center. And and I don't know if all the listeners know that I'm a founder of of the Joshua Center. Yes, you are. And so God has just blessed the Joshua Center, and I love the Joshua Center so much. And then Brad Franklin is a member of our board of Tangible Truth and offered us a space here for uh, Tangible Truth here at Fresh Roots. And now uh, Tangible Truth doesn't just see women like we did at the Hermitage, but we can see women, men, couples and families. So you see how God works. Yes. He amazing. just, he, it is amazing. I love Jesus. I love that I was here from the beginning to watch <laughs> that happen. Too. I do too. Yeah. I just love it. So I'm so glad that you're a part of yes. the podcast Thank now. You so and we're back together. We again. are we're back together again. <laughs> and how God works. So today we're going to do what I'm calling kind of part three. I don't know exactly any other way to put it, because we're just going to keep continuing our conversation on what do we do with with blocks and how we get through blocks and what causes blocks. And I think that will be a great place to start, don't you? What causes blocks? What causes the blocks? And even just thinking about the last couple of podcasts, the very first one that we did, just kind of talking about vulnerability being Mm -hmm. such a precious piece. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's really what we're trying to get to, right? Is how, how do I show up most authentically me? And if you go back listeners and listen to the other podcast, one one and and two, two. please do if you've not listened to it and then you'll know why we're doing this podcast, but they're so important because they flow together. They do. They do. Okay. Because one, we're really talking about um, being authentically human and, and vulnerability and what that means. The second one, we're kind of going more into what blocks us from being authentically human. Mm -hmm. And today we're really talking about specifically of how we get blocked with God. And then how do we still maneuver our way and lean into the blocks to get to Jesus and our vulnerability so that we can um, be authentically human with Jesus, right? Because isn't that a beautiful picture? Right. Because in the end, I shared with you, I want the listeners to tangibly 
catch my word, tangible truth, but tangibly know how to invite God literally into their everyday lives. Absolutely. So in order to be able to do that very freely, we've got to learn how to do this, uh, why and how to get beyond these blocks with God. So Absolutely. Absolutely. So just jump in right in, Susan. I know one of the things that we've kind of talked about of of why there are blocks with Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And so just even thinking about the last couple of podcasts and and what we kind of brought forward there with people, it really doesn't look much different with Jesus as it does with just humans in general. However, we kind of um, discussed a couple of things that maybe we see just a tad bit different. So I'm just going to kind of highlight, go back and highlight mm-hmm. the the points that we've made that are very similar, maybe mm-hmm. um, to the last couple of podcasts of, of how blocks show up just in relationship. And we're going to kind of listeners just hang with us. We're going to kind of sum it down to, hey, this is what a block looks like with Jesus specifically, as far as what we are seeing most in our office. So a block with Jesus can just look like a lot of times it's church hurt, but inside of that, it's people hurt, right? If whenever people have wounded us and hurt us, then all of a sudden, again, it breaks that trust and our protective moves come up, which we, which we've called, right, which we've named block. So The biggest thing, though, is whenever we feel um, let down and disappointed, not just from the people inside the church, but by God himself. Right. And so that's really what we're leaning into today of when when I'm really in pain and I feel like I've turned to Jesus and I can't find him there. That's really where I feel like we're going to kind of lean in today, Susan, of, okay, if if we're going to lean into that and focus on that, how do I work past that block that brings me closer to him and doesn't just leave me in a place where I then pull away and do my protective move and then never get back to him? Okay, I'm, I'm going to really stop you there because I even feel that right now because I hear that a lot in my sessions, just like you just said, you hear it a lot in yours too, like, Where's God? Yes. Where is God in my pain? Mm. When I'm in pain and I'm sitting in pain, I don't even feel him. Now that even when I say it, it hurts to even say it because we know up here in our head, like listeners, I'm pointing to my head, like in my mind, I know that he is supposed to be present, Mm -hmm. but I don't feel him. And that's what, am I getting it? Absolutely. That's what I'm hearing you say. And so that definitely would cause a block. Absolutely. Like I I can't, I can't move forward Mm -hmm. if I'm feeling that you're not with me, Uh, Megan, my friend's not with me, my spouse is not with me, my church is not with me, right? My whoever that I'm closest to is not with me, then I'm even saying, where are you, God? Where are you? I don't feel you. Absolutely. Okay. That's a block. It's a huge block. And just even as you say it, Susan, the energy like that I'm even feeling in the room just goes down. Right. Right. I mean, it's it's a heavy burden already to carry what we have in life, let alone if we feel like God is not there. And we can know in our head, that's almost, I feel uh-huh. like even a bigger jump. Exactly. Like we can know in our head logically that, yes, um, I, I know that he's shown up so many times before. I know he's good mm-hmm. in my head, right. but my heart right now can't find him. Right. 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 It's right. From the head to the heart, there's a big, big journey. Yes. From the head to the heart. And that's what we want the listeners to to hear is that we get it mm-hmm. because we've all experienced that journey from the head to the heart. Like we want to help people get rid of that block from the head to the heart. Mm-hmm. Because, and if we're talking, and we are speaking a spiritual language here, the enemy wants us to stay in the head. Absolutely. Like, no, he's not there. Absolutely. The enemy only can speak a lie. Mm-hmm. Only. So, no, he's not there. And, um, and we want, we want that gone because the truth is he is there. He is. And um, so a way that if I can jump, we may go back, but I just have to speak it because I'm feeling it so much. Do it. Because as when I have uh, felt a block, when I have he- heard the enemy in my head say no, and I'm trying to find that journey back to my heart. Uh, one of the things that has helped me so much, Megan, 
And I am so fickle. You have heard this before from me, but I'm so fickle when it comes to favorite scripture. But I have opened up the word of God and read Psalm 139 over Mm -hmm. and over and over again, but not to myself out loud, Mm. read the word out loud until I hear it. My heart hears it out loud that how much that God loves me, that there's no place I can go, that he's not there, that he fearfully and wonderfully made me, that he is my rock. I mean, just reading all the Mm. truth just over and over and over again. And it does something to Mm. me. And it, it begins to break down this barrier. I'm using the word barrier, which means the same thing to me as block. Right. And it begins to do that when I do it over and over again. And I'm asking God for that, mm-hmm. you know, to break down. I just love the word that you're using, the repetition. Yes. Right? I just think that, I, I think where we get caught a lot, which comes another block, right, is that whenever I lean in, lean into these places, I feel like I'm missing him. Right. And now I want to be clear listeners. Like, I know this is such a, a funky topic to be leaning into because I know that there's sometimes we just can't find him and that's a struggle. Right. So I want to honor, like, we're not saying like you're doing anything wrong here or this is wrong. I just want, I just want to actually lean into your humanness, mm-hmm. right. That you're just human. Like it, it is hard to go from our head to our heart. Mm. It's not that anything's wrong with us. It's just that it's a fight to make that jump. But back to kind of what you're saying there, Susan, is when we sit in repetition with Jesus and we can pass that over our hearts time and time and time again, it's like the enemy can't stand, Uh -uh. right? It's like Mm -hmm. he gives him no ground to stand on. And so it's like, Mm -hmm. it's like the crumbling ground, right? Mm -hmm. Is what it makes me think of is the ground starts breaking underneath where he's got no foothold any longer. Mm -hmm. And so I just love that picture of, of when we can really bring forth our pain Mm -hmm. and our vulnerability. Cause I just hear you in those scriptures. It's not just like, I'm just reading it. Like I'm reading a grocery list, right? Right. Like you're, it's a cry out to God. Yes. And when we're going there, it it brings out the humility in us and all of a sudden starts breaking that away. So I just, I love that picture of the repetition that sometimes it takes to stay in these places that it's not just one and done. Although sometimes we wish it could be Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's just the reps that really we need. Yes, exactly. And just acknowledging like you did us acknowledging, listen, we know because we've experienced it ourselves. Yes. You know, ourselves, I've experienced it. I know you have too, because again, we're human that that journey from head to heart is, it can be a very long journey. Absolutely. And, uh, But the repetition, yes, of reading God's word over and over and over Mm -hmm. and over again. And God brings that journey and shortens shortens that journey to where, you know, oh, you feel him. Oh, the presence of God. I feel him in my heart. I feel him in his love and care for me. And yes, then you believe. Yes, he fearfully and loving. Yes, he loves me. Mm-hmm. Yes. And get out, enemy. Mm-hmm. It's a lie. Absolutely. Straight from the pit of hell. I, absolutely. You know, it's just. And so then the block begins to, to release, dissipate. Yes. Dissipate. I love yes. that word. Yeah. Right. It can't, it can't, it can't withhold. Right. Whenever we lean into pain and we start to get a sense of God coming near us. Yeah. And then that right? that's who I am. Yes. Yeah. This is who I belong to. Yes. This is my identity. Mm, I love that picture. You know. That's such um, a beautiful picture. Mm-hmm. So when, again, listeners, when we're talking about blocks with Jesus, we're talking about anything that keeps us away from being able to hand Jesus our pain. And so, again, that can look a lot of different ways. Um Whenever we talk about blocks, we make moves in order to protect our heart and not lean into the pain or the vulnerability there, right? So it can be a lot of different things. It's like, I distance myself. I'm busy. I turn in Netflix. I mean, there's all kinds of moves that we really make in order to try and stay out of vulnerability. And that's what we're talking about whenever we talk about the block with Jesus is it's when we can't move toward him with our heart. And so I just love that picture that Susan, you're giving that says, when I can stay in reps with him, that all of a sudden something changes my heart. I start passing from my head to my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love that tangible way to do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you mentioned body 
man, where do you feel it? In my chest right now. I I feel it uh, from my chest, you know, in my torso area, from the chest to my torso, and it tingles. That's where, I don't know where you, but listeners, everyone always feels it in your body somewhere. And, you know, I was older when I learned to feel in my body, like the book that's titled The Body Keeps the School. Yes. Oh my gosh, every therapist should have yes. it. Yes. Uh, but it is so true that you feel a block Absolutely. in your body. You feel trauma, of course. That's what the book is about. But you do feel it in your body. And I was, again, older when I learned to feel mm-hmm. when I'm triggered, when I when someone offends me, when I feel that offense or whatever block Mm -hmm. in my body. Mm -hmm. So I learned it is in my torso, chest area. It tingles. Many of my clients, when when we learn where they feel in the body, back of the, I've I've heard everything. Absolutely. You know, back of their hands, back of their neck, back ache, all the things. But it's important to learn that. I I think it's vital, actually. I do too. Because the more that we can really get a sense of not only our, our, our emotions inside and our experience inside, mm-hmm. but also what our body is doing. Like, gosh, we can pick up on these blocks so much quicker, mm-hmm. right? And if we can pick up on these blocks so much quicker, then all of a sudden we can also lean into them and heal and repair with Jesus or with people yeah. so much quicker as well. Mm-hmm. So um, I think you're right on, Susan. Just It's so vital for us to begin to really understand what our body is doing whenever a block hits, right? So if I can begin listeners to really understand that when a block hits with me and Jesus, usually I feel it in my chest. Mm -hmm. So I'll just give a quick example. I'm driving here to to do this podcast. And I literally have been running from one thing to the other all Mm -hmm. day long. I have not been able to slow down. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm, and I'm driving here and I'm like, Oh, my chest is so tight right now. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. I've been so busy, so distracted. I'm in my head, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm thinking about other things, right? So all of a sudden, can I catch that? Can I lean into it and honoring and and honor the good reasons it's there that I've had to I've had to pick up and go on all day long, mm-hmm. jumping from one thing to the other. And and yet now is the time to transition and really just kind of sit and be, mm-hmm. right? And in order to make that jump. My key for me is -hmm. to be able to notice it inside my body and say, yes, my chest is tight. Mm -hmm. What's it want me to know? I'm about to transition transition into something pretty darn important here. Mm -hmm. All right. And and to this podcast that really matters. Mm -hmm. And so now all of a sudden I can start inviting Jesus into that place. Mm -hmm. Whenever I feel it in my chest, how do I then lean to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, what I feel in my body right now is a tightness. It's saying, hey, I'm a little nervous here. I'm jumping a lot. Can you come toward me? And so whenever I can catch it in the moment, all of a sudden it can draw me nearer to Jesus Mm -hmm. and dissipate, like you were saying, Mm -hmm. that block Mm -hmm. um, and create connection with me and Jesus. Oh, I love the way you describe that, Megan. It is a perfect scenario of what we're talking about. It was a great picture. I saw it in living color, everything that happened. I love the way that happened. And, you know, I thought just exactly how when we sat down on the sofa, you had asked me a question about because you and I talked about what we were going to talk about. I prayed before we sat, but you had asked me, now, did you make any other further notes? I said, oh, no, same day that you had. And so I had to go when you know, when Carrie came in, I, I, I had to go to the bathroom and I did the same thing with Jesus. I had yes. to do because I had a couple in right. Right before you came, that I had seen. And I just had to do the same thing with Jesus. God, what do you want to say? Mm. You know, through that's my thing that mm-hmm. I do. And I had to invite him in yes. and do the same thing to release what's happened all of the day and just ask him to speak through me and through you. I love the process you went through, releasing all the things, inviting him in. I did the same thing and inviting him in. It's a beautiful picture of releasing, making sure there are no more blocks because this is vitally important and we want him to be the one speaking, our lips are moving yes. during this podcast, but we want him to be the one speaking. So in order for, for us to be free, for him to do that, 
No blocks. No blocks. Exactly. And so I just, again, there's so much to say here, Susan, because I just think that this is such a big one, just in a, in a Christian culture, right? That's really just desiring Jesus to come near so much, right? And mm-hmm. then how do we make that jump from the head to the heart? Mm-hmm. And so I just love some of the things that we've said today. Whenever we can invite Jesus into those spaces, sit with him in there and imagine him coming toward us in those places and slow down and be where we are offering him up what we have in that moment, even maybe if it doesn't look so pretty. Then all of a sudden we get repetition there. We get reps there. And when we get reps there, our body can relax and it can go from a head to a heart. Mm -hmm. And so listeners, I hope that you can just kind of hear these tangible ways that we're really um, trying to move from the head to the heart to get closer to Jesus inside of our blocks. We don't have to just go with our blocks. We get to lean into them and offer them to Jesus because he cares about those as much as he does all the other things as well. So I just want to kind of invite you guys into this process with us. And once we're free from blocks, there are so many great things we're going to talk about in our next podcast that I think you're going to love. Yes. And I'm just going to give them a little teaser. Do it. Give it to you. Um, learning how to champion each other. Mm. Isn't that fun? So and much we fun. Can't, I can't champion you if I've got a block. Absolutely not. And you can't champion me if you've got a block. That's correct. There's your teaser. Listen in Listen next in. week. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Tangible Truth Podcast, part of the KLRC Podcast Network.